Hello, and welcome to the Access Festival. My name is Alex Chisholm, and I'm one of the co-producers of the festival. Access is an arts festival focused on access for people with visible and invisible disabilities and people seeking equity like indigenous, black, and people of color. What are we talking about when we're talking about access? We're talking about resources, justice, information, funding, opportunity, and more. The festival theme is art and accessibility in a time of change. We've had to change how we do the festival. Artists and performers have to change how they present their work to the community. How people access resources and uh, even human connection has been changing. So what is it we have to do now to put in place for post-COVID mental health? We're going to present 12 days of events, uh, both uh, live at the gathering place and uh, online here. The Gathering Place Association and the Gathering Place Community Center, uh, in partnership with Kickstart Disability Arts and funding from the City of Vancouver, the province of British Columbia and Spark BC, are proud to present the Access Festival. We hope you enjoy our events. And now I'm happy to introduce our host for today's program, Tareen Derrick, along with Jolene Andrews, who's been a cultural advisor for us for the festival. Hello, I'm Tareen Derrick, and I'm from the Gixan Nation. I'm here to host the Online Access Festival, Disability Arts, and I'm here with Jolene, and I look forward to seeing what's happening here today, tonight, whenever you're watching this. And uh, thank you for joining us. Thanks, Tareen. I'm Jolene Andrew. I'm Getsan Sudin, and I'm joined the Access Festival as a consultant. Um, and I'm really grateful to be a witness to artists and filmmakers like Tareen and the artists that are going to be joining today. Uh, first, we're going to have Elder Eugene Harry come and do a special welcome and a blessing for us. The 
slolem, it's hakus, it's not queo, to nikas, I see emerson, slakatis, amastalum, at a quam quam stewius, the suis is eat at the sias, need say your hakus, it's not queo. Haichka, consuis to tell it's a lup, it's a wattle, it's in snanitza. Song you heard was a blessing song. Chief Dan George gave it to the people to use to ease their mind, strengthen their emotion, to help them in the days of the, that are coming. The hard days, there's a healing with that song. Recognized as our first prayer. Give thanks to each and every one that's here, near and far. The ones that's going to come and share beautiful songs to strengthen the mind, strengthen the emotion. The hard work that you're producing here. I say, if you can see me, Lelamit, Tanitsa, Hakosha, this is this, he sets a wato. I want to give thanks to each and every one that's here helping one another. What is a week that means the well being is not strong? What is a week with any nation being held up so high by the people? The greatness of our ancestors was everybody was created, created equal. And today, I'm going to witness something beautiful, that you're going to work hand in hand, walking hand in hand to help the ones that need to be helped so they could help themselves be strong. All I could say is gratitude to ones that are going to come out here and share some beautiful songs for the mind, the emotion, and the well-being. Thank each and every one for your work that's going to help one another, recognizing we need to help hold each other up. Hi, hi, all my relations. And here we are to enjoy Dave Symington and Jim Meyer. <laughs>
Hey, Dave, it's great to see you. I haven't seen you in a long time. It's been a, been a minute, as they say. It has been. <gasps> yeah. So uh, I know you've played some music and stuff, and how has that helped you through COVID situations, or has COVID impacted your life? Yeah, it's been challenging because we uh, had to close the studio, and we then lost our rehearsal space. So we've had no ability to get together and jam and practice. So basically, if we do a show like this, we just kind of go in and do it and may send you know songs back and forth on email just to know what we're going to do. Uh, and then we've been collaborating, writing songs online too. We've done three or four of those. And we basically do it in a way that somebody comes up with a theme or a lyric idea or whatever it is, and then the other people send, say, the bass line or the drum part of the guitar or the vocals. Everything is sent online. And then usually Graham Wyman is the guy that puts it all together and tracks everything and mixes it. So we're making do, but it's it's been tough because I'd like to be playing a lot more. And so what was it like for you to play right now? It was great. I mean... We got through it. I, I think uh, both of us anticipated having more problems. There was a few problems here and there, nothing too major, but uh, um, yeah, it just, it just makes me want more. So sometimes the post-gig blues is a little more acute during COVID because although we know we've got something coming up, a couple of things coming up in June, uh, at least if you know you've got something coming up, that makes it a, li a little easier. But probably my favorite thing to do is get in the studio and practice and jam, so it's been a while. A year and three months, I guess? Yeah, it's a bit long, yeah. but uh, I think that uh, music is great medicine, and so um, how has that been for you? Is music medicine to you also? Definitely is. It's uh, cathartic as well. Uh, and uh, I have sort of adapted, like I've been writing beats for a uh, rapper friend of mine, Greg Labine, who I'm sure you know. And um, that's been kind of fun. It's been a totally different experience, but I've, uh, it's actually fun to do. And so initially I wrote three or four or five or 10, whatever it was, because I was really in the middle of, and then the juices kind of dried up a little bit. And I'm thinking it's not really what I want to do. Same with writing lyrics and poetry and whatever else. For me, it kind of comes in phases, kind of rely on the muse. But music, I'll go to the studio any anytime. I don't need a lot of prodding for that. I guess music speaks to you in a different way than a person would. Well, it's just a different relationship, you know, when you're not talking to each other, but you're communicating through music, and uh, it's it's quite unique and uh, rich, you know, a lot of different textures. I want to ask you about your T-shirt. Can we can we go there momentarily? My T-shirt. My T-shirt was made uh, just for myself because I'm all I'm always landing on my face. So this is a reminder for me to uh, have a sense of humor. And um, <sighs> some of my other hats is I do speaking engagements. So this is one of the T-shirts that I wear. But sometimes we all fall on our face. And sometimes when I fall on my face, I also have to laugh about it. So this is part but of my... It's good for those that have fallen on their face because then it would look like it was you were sitting up. <laughs> it would kind of, but you know, and this is what we're demonstrating I mean, here is we have a crazy sense of humor. I mean, what are your quad thoughts? My quad thoughts? I've fallen on my face a few times and other body parts. And uh, now if I think if that happened to me, I'd be uh, a bag of dust. So You're not that old. <laughs> well, in quad years, it's maybe a little different. But, yeah. So uh, 
how has it been for everyone here um, doing the show and having so much fun with it? For me, it was really, really, really um, refreshing to be working with a great group of people and um, listening to music live, because I miss that a lot. And uh, being a part of the Access Festival 2021 has been a really good experience for me. So thank you to the crew and to every participant that has been a part of this and everybody behind the scenes. Thank you very much for everything that you've done. I would like to thank them as well because everybody's been so accommodating and flexible and professional and you know somehow we, we get these things done. So thanks to everybody and everybody out there. Thank you very much. Hello and welcome, Sandy Schofield at the Access Festival 2021.
forever. I keep having these complete setbacks. Um, I've decided to name it Nippy, which is Creed for Water. and Bushi and I'm dedicating it to Tina Fontaine as well. Um, there we go. So we all remember Colton Bushi. Let's not forget about Colton Bushi.
Sandy. It's great to see you. Hi, and Tureen. It's great to see you, too. So beautiful to see your smile. And uh, thank you for being a part of the Access oh, Festival. Oh, yeah, my pleasure. My honor. And I appreciate how you've brought in some recent history into your songs. Is mm. that part of the foundation of all of your work? Mm -hmm. I like to write about things that are that I know to be true within myself, right? All the great artists I've ever followed, whether it doesn't matter what their medium is, they've always talked about creating from something that's real and true for you. Otherwise, you mimic, and then it's the truth that comes through to people and cuts through, right? That's what I believe when I see artists that I'm really moved by. It's some truth that speaks to me. And I can hear that in your songs. And uh, I know you've had some recent stuff happen with you. And uh, how have you been coping with COVID and all of that? Oh, COVID's been a piece of cake. All of 2020, I had infections on my feet where I couldn't walk. And then bang, right out of the gate, 2021. I fell down some cement stairs and broke my pelvis in two places and my tailbone on both sides. And I just got out of the hospital from being in there three months, so I'm a little tender. And so it's really great to see you. And uh, have you written anything about, about your experiences with COVID? No, not about COVID. Because COVID hasn't phased me. I've had health issues. Although I had four COVID tests in the hospital, like if I get another one of those things shoved up my nose, I'm going to scream bloody murder. <laughs> it's always great to hear you and hear your <laughs> sense of humor about all of this stuff. And I uh, thank you for being a part of this festival. Well, I want to thank Alex and Teresa for having me. And thanks to our wonderful camera people. Woohoo! And our sound gal, Marissa. And to you, MC Extraordinaire, thank you, Trine. Thank you very much for your time. And now we're about to watch a video by Tane Uganaba, and it was recorded at Guilt and Company with Trevor Twos, and it's about Afroscience. This song is called Afroscience. All futures rely on a science, believe me, yeah, yeah. I keep checking the sky for the signs that skin can deceive me, yeah. I keep checking the time because it's flying and it's bleeding out, bleeding out. I know it's viral life. on that pipe tree.
Clear Sky and the Constellations. Their music can be found on all streaming platforms. Thank you, Tareen. Thank you, Access Festival. Coming to you live from Musquam, Squamish, Level 2 Territory. Vancouver. Shout out Gathering Place, Red Gate Studios, all the organizers of the festival. Love and gratitude. We don't need no colonial policy. We be free and see the equality. Yeah, yeah, yeah.
never cease to oppress us. We need the people to uprise and tear down all of those walls that create barriers and division amongst us. Healing for the people, love for the people. We're gonna get down like James Brown like this. You ready? Like this. Universal health. and just appreciation for having us here to perform our messages and our music and to just have this experience together and just want to wish everybody safe safety and healing and this protection as we navigate through these times this uh, song we got coming up is titled our home and it's a, a new track on new works that we've been creating during these times and Get ready to share with you today. This is our debut performance of the song, so enjoy.
Thank you for being our audience for that first red our first uh, performance of our home. Thank you. New work's coming out, and we're looking forward to sharing that and the rest of the amazing, talented work that we're working on uh, with Beaver Thomas right here. Amazing guitar. Everybody give it up for Beaver Thomas. And of course, to my left, the amazing Tia Todetti Clear Sky. Amazing, talented musicians. Um, and um, yes, again, here we go. So the next track we got is from our debut album, Indigifunk, that as Tureen mentioned, you can find on all streaming platforms, Spotify, Apple Music, everywhere. Um, and ones I've never even heard of or even listened to. So you can find it. It's called Indigifunk, Curtis Clear Sky and the Constellations. We also have uh, record, vinyl records for sale. If anybody out there is a vinyl listener, we have those as well. You can find all that information. You go to our Bandcamp or any of our social media sites will lead you to the right place. Okay, this one right here is called Mobilize. Oh, yeah. 
our acoustic version. These are acoustic songs. Uh, Beaver Thomas, everybody. Amazing guy. Thank you, Thank you. Again, Tia Torelli, Clear Sky. Um, amazing town. I just want to introduce them a little more. Uh, Beaver, tell us where you're from. I was actually born and raised in Vancouver, but uh, my family's from the Kalisus Reserve in Saskatchewan, Korean soda one. Yes. Hi, hi. Yes. We which? Tia, yeah. introduce us. <laughs> let, let the people know who you are. <laughs> Kia ora. Um, uh, I'm from the Ngāpuhi Te Apaudi tribes in Aotearoa, New Zealand. Kia ora. And again, my name is Curtis Clear Sky, and I'm from the Nitsi to be and the Anishinaabe peoples, and born and raised here in this beautiful territory, Musqueam, Squamish, Tsleil-Waututh people's territory uh, in the urban city here. And um, yeah, today we have our rendition of the acoustic style songs. I hope you enjoy it. And uh, we have a full band that we usually play with, but because of COVID and because of the impacts that we're dealing with, uh, just having to be safe and it is a very important thing for all of us to approach uh, these times safely and responsibly and respectfully and just recognizing that the impacts so definitely have impacted a lot of people in different parts of our community uh, and sometimes increasing more challenges in accessibility and just recognizing that uh, times of probably uh, have been difficult for many of us all of us and um, and some of us in more so in different ways uh, whatever the case, it's just all about being kind to each other, uh, being considerate to each other. Uh, and sometimes there's opportunity to have those relationships and check in with each other and support each other in these times. And sometimes we're not able to see each other, be with each other uh, physically, but sometimes we have the technology as well. Thank goodness. Um, <laughs> and either way, you know, uh, we have to do all our part. And, uh, whatever ways we're doing it. And um, yeah, today uh, we're just thankful for the opportunity to have this uh, space and the crew. Just thank you to the crew. Um, appreciate you being here today to support us and our hosts and camera people, sound people, everybody. Just uh, thank you. Um, so this track here, we're gonna uh, move to um, uh, some of our backing tracks from our music. Uh, again, we'd love to have the band, but we can't. Uh, just being out of, uh, being responsible. So until that time, we, uh, next time maybe we can bring the whole band and you can hear the full sound of uh, Curtis Clear Sky and the Constellations. Uh, but we do have our band in our pocket on the computer here. So um, it's not the real thing. It is the real thing, but it's not the, it's a recorded capturing. So here we go. We're gonna play this song. This one's called Broken Treaties. And this one uh, is off our album, Indigifunk. And you can catch it again on all live streaming, sorry, uh, streaming sites. And uh, this one features Sugar Montour, um, rest in peace, late Sugar Montour. Uh, he's captured a vocal at the beginning uh, during Oka, and he shared some empowering words, and we we're blessed to have his uh, voice uh, through his family support opportunity. Broken trees.
prison of people. They don't see the truth, they don't see us equal. All C and I it sees with ego. But the coming as a deceiving the people, wanting us to pay everywhere that we go. Capitalize on everything that we do. Coming from the land for generations. Now we must rely on the mind preservation. Relocalizing urbanization. All around the world is get back to nature. is called Turtle Island. Uh, it features amazing, talented musicians, all the, the, the talented constellations. A shout out to all our constellations, all those that recorded on the tracks, um, and those that play with us, the past people that play with us, and the future relatives coming to play with us. 
um, and our new performances. And uh, just shout out to uh, all the musicians, Ramon Cantillo, uh, Rusty, uh, uh, Raul, DJ, Esp uh, DJ Sue Comandante, Raul Espinosa, Wilson Mendez. Uh, just shout out to Kat Hendricks, also played drums on these tracks, on the recordings. Uh, Vancouver hip hop. Vancouver's got a big history in hip hop. A lot of people may or may not know, but one of the songs that was foundational in the creation of hip hop in New York City was called Apache, recorded here in Vancouver. Uh, Apache uh, was played by, the drums were played by Kat Hendricks, who also plays on our music on that track you just heard, and this track right here coming up, Turtle Island. So Vancouver hip hop connections there. And still making it happen. This one is called Turtle Island. For those who may know or may not know, this continent has a, has a name. It's not a colonial name, and it's not called America, and uh, we actually call it Turtle Island. Uh, many uh, different nations share a similar uh, common story about the creation of Turtle Island, um, and uh, that's the continent that we call uh, Turtle Island. Some people call it North America or Mexico, Canada, USA. We call it Turtle Island. That's the that's the indigenous identity. So when we're doing uh, recognition, it's a continental recognition, Turtle Island. So I invite everybody to uh, re reflect and rechange and reapproach the identity and recognize the indigenous peoples and how we identify the lands and territories and wherever territory you're in. All my relations, Turtle Island, featuring Juno Award-winning Mohawk Blues Man Murray Porter.
Hey, Curtis, it was great to hear your music and see you again, and thank you for being a part of this festival. A um, couple of things here. I, um, when we say access, we mean access not only to ramps or bathrooms, but also equitable access to resources and justice. What are your thoughts on this? That's a great question. Um, first of all, again, thanks. Uh, thank you to Access Festival for having us and to have opportunity to, to share our voice and to share um, empowering messages. And um, yeah, looking at, yeah, there is, <clears throat> we're, we're living in a society where oftentimes there's uh, not consideration for equality. There's, not, there's no consideration for justice and uh, creating uh, equal opportunity. And a lot of times we live in a, a society that is, considers things on a corporate, on a, uh, financial level, an economic uh, perspective, and it's uh, we're both First Nations, Indigenous people. You know, in our cultures, in our various cultures around the world, we we're always thinking about being equal and sharing and contributing um, in that way. So it's a cultural value that we have to always make sure that we always uh, are inclusive to all of our relatives and that we're not taking away from people. So, you know, those cultural values are some of the important values that I think that we are implementing uh, as best as possible as Indigenous people. And uh, moving forward, those are valuable, ancient, not even, yeah, ancient. These, these values go back so many thousands of years. Principles. We couldn't survive if we weren't inclusive to our relatives. So these are good valuables, uh, values to return to and to bring back into our world uh, because in this society, it's not sustainable to not be inclusive to everybody. And we need everybody. We need all of our animal relatives. We need the water. We need the air. We need everything. Then one thing, if, if there's an imbalance, it's going to be harmful. And for this society, uh, it, yeah, it's... We're, we're on that mission. So how, does the, how has this approach influenced your music and, and how you write songs and, and bring that story about through your music? You know, it's it, very important to uh, share those messages uh, in the music, in the writing. Those cultural values are all, you know, are a part of the message. It's about the empowerment, uh, using that opportunity to, to share those chants, those messages to raise the vibration, to raise the awareness around these things. Um, 
you know, the messages are about uh, if, you know, you got an opportunity to have a microphone or a platform, it's a valuable opportunity to use that for using it for benefit of progress. And uh, I'm thankful for the opportunity to uh, have the skills uh, and opportunities to, and abilities to perform and to share messages. And um, it, it, there's no other way. <laughs> I mean, it is what it is. Do prejudices and presumptions affect you as an artist? Uh, do they affect me and my artistic skill and ability? No. Uh, do I face barriers uh, in the society? Yeah, definitely. There's barriers for sure that uh, we all are facing in various uh, ways as an indigenous person in a society that's been dominated by white supremacist uh, racism in a systemic uh, way. Yes, it has uh, affected that. And, you know, continue to break down those barriers and to challenge those systems and to create opportunity, accessibility, justice for indigenous people like myself, other people of color, uh, to create those opportunities for our voices to be heard. Uh, as you heard in the music, we talk about Turtle Island. How many people are aware that this continent has indigenous identity and people don't see that, they overlook that. And that is what we're about, is creating that awareness that yeah, we have identity. There is a, there is a history to this land. It just wasn't terra nullis, empty space. It was full of history and people and spirit and connection and, and that's what we're talking about. And so, post-COVID, what are the common issues you want to advocate for? Healing, love, justice, equality for the people, for everybody. This is an opportunity. Reset button's been pushed. Uh, it's an opportunity for us to create those opportunities um, to look at the world in a different way. And to, uh, yeah, I, I think, it, but it, it, that's the work for everybody. It's the work for people to take on the leadership and to take initiative. We've had opportunity to reflect on society. Uh, things are changing. You know, the importance of family and connection and our relationships and our community, those are things definitely everybody's considering. And the importance of that. Uh, what does that mean for people uh, in these times when we're isolated a lot of times? And that's a valuable thing to have the, those family and community relationships. So in indigenous communities, what is your approach to persons with disability since, since this is about access for everyone? Mm -hmm. um, for myself, I have never been seen separate from the community mm -hmm. and even working with access right now and doing this interview with you, I don't feel separate from any mm -hmm. of it. So how do you uh, see this approach? Or, know, is it, or is it even there for you? You know, it's, it's looking at those values that our ancestors have had, and it's about being inclusive, looking at the circle, looking at it in a circle approach, and making sure that we are creating space for our relatives, and that we're not closing people out, we're not doing it in like a pyramid approach, top down, and looking at uh, standing on top of each other. We're looking at being shoulder to shoulder, and... Um, you know, there's always learning. I think the, there's always opportunity for us to learn how to be more inclusive. And I know that I'm always learning. I'm, I'm, I'm a father, I'm a husband, I'm a brother, I'm a community member, I'm a son, I'm a, you know, I'm a relative, I'm a cousin, I'm a nephew. Um, you know, and I'm always learning. And I think that we're, all, we're always learning. And I think that's an important thing to remember uh, in these times and to uh, support each other in that learning process. And, um, you know, and sometimes we got to raise our voices to, to share those learning opportunities. Yeah. Thank you very much for your time. And thank you for the great show. Oh, you're welcome. Thanks. Thank you. I got more answers if you. <laughs> talk away if I you can choose talk all to. Day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> See, this is where the sense of humor is. We could sit and talk all day. Yeah, yeah. But it's really good to be working together with, with a group such as this. And I, I appreciate everyone that's involved in this process and having access. But um, 
I like what you've said because what we do as indigenous people, we don't see disability at all in terms of the work that I've done. Um, I'm just a part of the crew. And uh, with that being said, I hope that this message and that this festival um, feeds that message through to whoever's watching this yeah. because they are part of who we are. Yeah, 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 yeah. So. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and for indigenous people in society, you know, there are really a couple key point uh, messages, you know, was, yeah, there's a lot going on. Uh, indigenous people have faced a lot of unequal justice and um, accessibility. And, you know, we're in the process of creating that healing uh, right now because, uh, you know, a lot of our voices through residential school, the cultural genocidal impacts uh, that attempted to silence Indigenous people's voices and our cultural beliefs and our cultural values, there was an attempt to eliminate all of that. And we're bringing that back, you know, and that's the important thing is to recognize those values are just are, are immeasurable in the amount of value that it has. So. Uh, is bringing those back to the people and equality and justice. Thank you. Thank you. Miigwech. Hi, Scott. You went to see it to need you deal with an aquail. Hi, Scott. Could see Nasum to steal with. Was go yes out could stu seed to mark sweet near hakush to his desk was neat detailum. Your hakush was neat author just to follow one. I want to say thank you to all the ones that performed, shared some songs, a blessing for each and every one. Ask the creator to keep on blessing your mind and your heart. S song I'm going to share comes from the Couch and Nation. Smakosit shared this song for a healing song to help each and every one. And I want to continue that strength for each and every one that's, that's going to he help one another in the days that are coming. So it'll all be strong in their mind, their emotion, and their well-being, especially the things that we're working for is to take care of one another, treat each other equal. Oh, 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 oh.
three, four, one, and other. Pray for one and other. I say, if you will, Tlachen to Schatzten, Tlachen to Schwallowen, the Swiss is each at in Smestimo, because me, you are what to not ask well. Special blessing for your mind, your emotion, and your well being. And all good things come in all the days that are coming, that your trail is clear. All my relations. Thank you to Eugene, Harry, and everyone who's watched the Access 2021 Festival. <laughs>